please welcome the woman who has kept Howard Sturm in check, Robin Kirby. <laughs> years that that yeah. thing did you <laughs> you're better at your history than i am yeah it doesn't seem like that long i've been having a good time have you that's very important <laughs> yes absolutely since 1981 robin has been teamed up with one of the most controversial broadcasters in history howard stern and they even did a roper poll on howard stern and they found out 61 percent found that howard was demeaning toward blacks minorities now the most asked question of you has got to be, as a black woman, how do you justify working for a man who's been labeled uh, a racist? Well, all By day other long, people. yes, all day long. I hear. First of That's all, let me point That's the one question, out, right? Aren't you bored? Point out in that poll, 40% of the country didn't think he was that way. That's <laughs> okay. a pretty good, you know. That's surprising, yeah. Our presidents are elected by little better margins than that. Exactly. So that's pretty good. Uh, that's number one. Number two... 60% of the country has never heard Howard Stern either. I mean, we are only heard in 20 markets across the country. Okay. So certainly, some of those people giving their opinion have never heard the show, and they're responding to what they read in the press. That's right. I do not believe that I'm working with a racist or a sexist person. We certainly deal with all of those topics and issues on our but show. But in his heart, he is not. As far as I'm concerned, no. But how okay. do you know a person's heart? You only know what you know. That's I true. have known him to be a generous performer, a good co-worker and partner, and that's why I'm there. I'm there because we do an entertainment show, number one, and we're having a good time, and a lot of people who also listen to that show enjoy it for the, on that level. There are now a lot of talk, there's now a lot of talk about talk radio. Oh, yes. Especially um, now that we have a Democratic president and a Republican Congress, and a lot of focus has been placed on talk radio. However, we don't do those kinds of shows. We're not doing a political show. We're not trying to tell people how they're living, how to live their lives or how to vote on issues. We try to entertain you on your way to work in the morning. I think that's fair enough. I don't think he is I don't believe that in my heart, I don't think he's a racist or a sexist. I think it's like everything else. And I spent 36 years in radio. To me, it's an act. Mm -hmm. It's like Rush Limbaugh's an act. And uh, he will do whatever he needs to do to shock, because if he didn't, he wouldn't be Howard Stern and he wouldn't be on the air. Inside, I find him probably an average. You would have to most, that again. most members of the media are inside liberals, and I think he probably is. You I think would have that's to discuss that with him. I can't answer those questions. <laughs> I can certainly not. answer the ones about justifying my role on the show. Has there ever been a point where you think he went too far? I don't think that any time you're having a conversation about something, you can go too far. What we are doing is seeing what people say about things, how people talk in real life. Okay. You know, we have uh, this backlash in the country where we think everything on the radio or TV should be nice and pristine. But I'd like to point out to people that during some of the worst times in this country, there wasn't television, movies, or radio to influence people. You know, we had slavery. Right. There were no TVs. Nobody there knew was what was no, going on. There was no movie telling people and reinforcing those negative opinions of black people that kept us enslaved. During the time when they were using hoses to wash black people down the street for asking for their rights. Everybody was very polite on the radio and the television, but it didn't make people change those attitudes or opinion. What changed those attitudes and opinions was confrontation. Okay. Robin, you're very comfortable with who you are and with your race. Did you always feel that way? I don't think growing up at the time that I did, a lot of people felt comfortable with their race. You know, we were talk, taught to look down when we were addressed by white people. We were told that, you know, we were supposed to step back and let them have their turn when it came time to be served at a counter. There were some places in the country where we could not be served food. We couldn't That's drink right. out of the same water fountain or go to the same bathroom, and we couldn't be registered at the same hotel. Tell. So certainly there was a lot of negative uh, impressions out there of what it meant to be black, even as we were growing up. And I grew up in the time that all of those civil rights 
uh, laws came into effect. So we were at that changing period, and blacks had been suffering under those Jim Crow laws for years when I was being raised. And people taught me, yes, you can't talk up to white people. They're smarter than we are. So you got a lot of negative imprinting. And it took a long time to figure out that that was just the old hogwash. That's right. And you didn't have to feel that way. You didn't have to think of yourself that way. And there was no way anyone could stop you if you felt good about yourself. As a teenager, you would say to yourself, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. Why? Well, at the time, we were colored people. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm colored, I'm colored, I'm colored. No, I didn't say that. It was, <laughs> it was my effort at changing my uh, feeling about being a black person raised in America to stop letting other people determine what my name should be. I wasn't going to be a Negro anymore. I wasn't going to be colored. Oh, I, I decided that I the see. revolutionary thing was to be black. Nobody ever confronted that issue. You know, it was a thing I nobody see. wanted to be called. So I would just say, I'm black. I'm black. And then I finally started saying it out loud. You should have seen the uh, reaction. <laughs> it was incredible. Where did the ability to succeed come from in you? Uh, Robin was a nurse. Robin went on and made herself a nurse, mm -hmm. went to the service, and has, I think most people will say, has made a big success of her life. Well, thank you. Where does that come from? I think some of it was innate, and the other part... Do you? Yeah. That, you are you know, born was... that you're going, no matter what your color, you're born that you're going to do that or you're not going to do it. That's Yes, strange. because I've seen too many examples of people who haven't had all of the right, right things happen to them in their lives and they succeed anyway. So some of that, you know, is being born a fighter, being born a rebel who's not going to just accept the status quo. And the other part is that I had really good role models in the sense that at, at the time there was Martin Luther King and yes. uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, all of these people who were standing up and saying the things we needed to hear, that it was wrong how black people were treated in this country and that you had a right at birth to have the same rights and privileges as every other American and there was nothing about you that innately made you bad or wrong. Did you know that uh, recently Robin and Howard saved a life by preventing a caller from committing suicide? And uh, this wasn't the first time that Robin encountered a suicidal person, because she herself at one point entertained thoughts of taking her own life. We're going to tell that shocking tale next. Welcome back. We're talking with uh, half of that team. And I give her co-billing. If he doesn't, I do anyhow. Her name, she's radio personality Robin Quivers. Life wasn't always easy. She uh, has been very open in discussing that she often entertained thoughts of suicide. And we said, let's talk about this. Tell me why. Oh, in the depths of depression when I didn't think things were working well and that I was possibly going to lose the opportunity to do whatever it was I wanted to do or never see my dreams come true. I didn't really examine at the time what those deep-seated feelings of failure were all about. But when it seemed that I was not going to be able to do what I wanted to do, oftentimes my out would be suicide. Well, if it gets too bad, if I feel too bad, if I can't take it anymore, I can just kill myself. And that was a way of sort of getting through you know, the whatever was going on at the time. It happened uh, a number of times during my career, but I would think that the worst times were uh, that period in the Air Force when I really <laughs> wanted to get out and they wouldn't let me. And uh, then when we were uh, hired by D WNBC, the radio station that Only he was, was hired, you weren't hired. Not at first. Yeah. And uh, then when we got to NBC, it was a real awful situation. You know, we weren't welcomed with open arms and it was a very difficult time and we got a lot of Didn't, uh, negative somebody, pounding. I remember from the book somebody said uh, to Howard, your program will never be heard in New York, which is very typical broadcast stuff for them to do to you. You'll never make it. Your, your yeah, you apparently had a lot of that in your career. They always said that. Never could, never possible, never any of that. And I just think maybe they do that as standard uh, 
practice. You, in the book, you candidly discuss what you consider your first heavyweight title bout with your father, right? Tell us about that. Well, at 11 years old, I was, I was what I would consider a daddy's girl. He was my favorite parent, and we hung out together, and I thought he was my best friend. And at the age of 11, he turned that into something a little bit different. One day, I was on my way out to play with some friends after school, and he said, come give me a hug. And it wasn't like any hug he had ever given me before. It lasted a long time. It felt different. And the next thing I know, he was kissing me on the lips, which was not something we did in our home. And it turned into months of uh, increasing sexual molestation. Yes, ma'am. Um, Robin, you know there is such a thing as black pride, and mm -hmm. I fail to see any of that in you. In this day and time where they're portraying black people <laughs> as negative influence in our lives, I see you contribute to that. I used to watch the Howard Stern show, but after watching you, I became so disgusted with the way that you acted that I couldn't even watch it anymore. I mean, I used to see you when he would make his when he would make his races remarks and degrade women, you would be laughing like some type of hyena. I call you how was hyena. But and, wait a minute, um, wait a minute. Let me, well, let me, let me, let me ask you something. You but you address but the there should be something let me... that money should not be able to buy. Well, me... that's your opinion, first of all. We constantly hear all day long people talking about our racist society. Yes. And uh, then people say to me, how can you sit there with that racist? Well, if society is racist, then all of us are sitting here with racist why are you doing that? We have to learn to talk to each other in this country and deal with our problems, address the situation. You don't get up and run out of a room just because somebody says something you don't like. That is your opinion. That's how you plan to deal with it. And shouting at somebody has never changed their mind about anything. Not you. I'm talking about talking to Howard. And when we do a skit on the show and you find it racist, if I were to then scream and walk out, it would still go on. On. Right, but still, you don't make jokes of it. You don't make jokes of it. You, you feel don't. It on a serious note. You don't. Uh, on a serious you have note. no ability so to laugh you at yourself, it, you and you're saying okay. that you I okay don't have the right to choose how out. I would handle myself okay. in that situation. Okay. Deal with it on a serious level. That's no. what you would do. That's let me let me talk one at a time. What is happening? I have no argument with what you're saying, but. When you hear two people talk, one, the mic cancels out. Right. So what we're going to have to do is she's going to say what she says, then you leave a pause, right. and then you say, go ahead, I I'm willing to listen to you. What right. is it you're what telling I'm her? Saying is but you have to you say it in front of the mic. Okay. Helps okay, me. what I'm Thank saying you. is that the way you deal with this this racism, as you put it, is is not it's it's not a funny issue. It's not a funny issue. You don't issue. listen to our show to constantly. At. There it's are it's nothing to laugh right. at until okay. it's dealt with seriously. All right, let me All right? let me it's address you now. Our show has many different. Uh, spices and uh, spices. there are yes, absolutely. We at times we are in the midst of doing a bit. At other okay. times we are discussing the news. At various times we're just having a discussion about life in general. To characterize our show as dealing with any situation in one way is to characterize it in ways that it does not exist. But we why, are having why, a why conversation. Is it that you as a black woman, you is know the what you can do. Degraded you on this know issue. what you can do. That is not true. That is not true. We take on every group and every situation, and all you can hear is when it's about black people because that's your sensitivity. Whenever yes, ma'am, stand up. Okay. Her turn. Hello. Her turn. say the same thing when I talk to Excuse me. I'd like to say something at this moment. They only hear the insults about themselves. Okay. I hear so, insults about excuse, people. Excuse me, excuse me. everybody's uh, bashing Robin. I'd like to know, out of everyone in this audience, how many of you have read her book? I wouldn't read her book. Oh, wait a minute, let me talk. You but that's how say. you get a positive How many opinion? of you have read her book? Number one, if you read her book or even part of the book, you would understand what Robin is about. What Robin does with the Howard Stern Show is a job. That is her job. Now, what they do, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. You had your talk. Excuse me, for those of you who have thought that, for those of you who think that Robin has sold out, get to know what Robin is about. She has a book out now. No, you only see that now. You see that now, but you don't know her as a person. You see, excuse me, you all saw, I read the book. Wait a minute, it's... I read the book, okay? What Robin does, what she... All right, time out. 
Time out. Hold out. Shh. Shh. Okay. Hello. Hold. Hold for a minute. All I'm asking you to do is. All I'm asking you to do is to be polite to our guests for a minute. Yes, ma'am. First of all, I want to say peace, Robin. It's been three years. I haven't seen you in that long. Oh, wow. I met Robin in 1992 when I did Howard Stern show twice. And if I didn't know the man like I knew when I met him, I wouldn't have done his show. I caught a lot of heat for doing Howard's show. What you doing up there? You a Muslim. But I got to know the man. The man went out of his way to make me comfortable. After the first show, I got a call back for the second show, okay? Robin, we had a long, we talked, you know, we talked. We got ready, we talked, we got to know each other. It's easy to criticize somebody when you're sitting back wanting to be where they are. Keep on the pizza. I think a lot of times we get this thing confused, uh, the differences between race and ethnicity, it doesn't matter whether it's a radio show or a TV show or whatever, these things get mixed in because they're done deliberately. There's always been one race. There is no racism. You have different ethnicities. Everybody in here came from one race. When that stuff continues, that misinformation continues, all it does is affect everything, and it's done purposely, and it's done to divide us and whatnot. So if we get back on the track of being informed and being educated, we can avoid a lot of this nonsense that's going on right now. I want to say that I was very appalled and disgusted about the comment that um, Howard Stern made about the tragic death of Selena, the Tejano what music was, star. What excuse, was me, the excuse me, excuse what me, was the excuse me, excuse me. And he also made a comment, a comment about Hispanic people that I did not agree with. He said that Hispanic music was, was chipmunk music. How could you stand by a man who could sit there and say something like that about a group of people? Excuse we me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. It is not a comedy. It's a hold comedy on, show. Hold on a second. You don't like that excuse me, Miss Quivers, Miss Quivers, please give me my chance to speak. Do you I, like excuse all me. Of humor? Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Do not insult. Do not go insult. Ahead, excuse ahead. me. Do not insult. I my, heard what excuse you Excuse me, say. miss. You're not letting me finish. Do not insult my people by sitting there and being on stage with Howard Stern and Kane. Do not insult me by not letting me finish. Do not insult Hispanic go people ahead, that way. Ahead, you know, that was not a joke. This woman died tragically, okay? She was a 23-year-old woman and she died tragically. It's not for him to make jokes and put gunshots behind her music. How dare he? How Let's dare you? Have you let him get away? Oh, I'm sorry. Because what once you, wait, again, wait, wait, wait. I understand that you're doing a job and you're on his show, but I think you should have made a comment about it, whether or not you agree with it or not. How do you feel about the comments he made? You know, Hispanic people wait, are not wait, a joke wait. in this you country. Asked her a question. We need to be more Hello? You, you asked her a question. Okay, let her ahead. answer. How do you feel, <laughs> Robin? I, I agree with this woman. I felt uh, that it, having nothing to do with being Hispanic, I felt it was an unnecessary uh, thing to take after the yes. dead like that. Just unnecessary. And after uh, a group. Yeah, Sally's going to go on now. What we're asking is, <laughs> how did you feel? That's her question. All right, you, you again, out of context, right. any number of things on my show could be taken in that light. Okay. First of all. All right, second of all, we do, we have a show that is all about going over the line and exploring the boundaries of bad taste, okay? When we deal with a person who has died, i.e. Kurt Cobain, Selena, we do what we consider our tabloid attempt at a reenactment. But, um, don't you and what we do at that time is, as we're I presenting that. that news story, we might play a person's music or play a segment of their show no. if they're on a no, TV no, show no, or whatever. No, 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 and then no. if they jumped off a building, you'll hear a, a, you know, no, a body no. drop. If they were shot, you'll hear Excuse a gunshot. Me. Okay, I that was is not aware of You did not answer my okay? question. So we did not, did not answer my question, Ms. Quivers. Out of and that proves the my ordinary. Point. Okay. We treat all death that way. that way. I did not know that. Yes, ma'am. I have something to say. I, in some way, I agree with you because there's a lot of things. By yelling at his audience, yelling at her, it's really not going to do anything. As us black people, we have enough problems in this world already. 
and by hating each other, it's not going to solve anything. But I really seriously think that you should stand up for your own race. What am I, I standing up stand for? First of all, race. when somebody, for, what we're doing is presenting the fact that there are racists in this country, there is racist thought in this country. You can't address every racist, and screaming at them is not going to change their mind. What you should be about is building your own self-image, your own self-esteem, and going to get what's yours. Yes, and those rights belong to everybody in America. Hi. Um, I think from what you've said so far, I've gotten a really strong feeling from you, and I, and I like who, what you're about so far. I, I don't know enough about you so far, but I know I got a really good feeling, and I, I believe Howard probably is isn't like that in real life either. It's, it's, it's all hype. And I feel but like it's a very sad is, statement we that shouldn't be a so worried. many people... Excuse me for a second. In. You made me want to make a point, so I want to address you for a second. The point is every one of us should be concerned about what we think of ourselves and how we feel about the world. Our show is for you to listen and contrast your opinions with what you hear. We are giving you a picture of the world and then you can say, oh yeah, I know people who think that way. There are people who talk that way and people who feel that way. What do you do about it? Do you go home to your room and cry because people don't like black people or do you go on and realize those are stupid comments that people make that is a stupid thought process that goes on in this country? Let me take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're talking today to radio co-host Robin Quivers, and she's been working with Howard Stern for the past 14 years. Yes, ma'am. Robin, um, I've been a fan of the show for so many years. I don't think Howard Stern is a racist. I'm Jewish, and last year when Schindler's List came out, he put down Jewish people who died in concentration camps. I mean, I, I got a little annoyed, but I'm not going around screaming about it. I love Howard Stern. I love you. I love the whole show. And okay. What? Can I ask you what? one question? Yeah. Do women really like get undressed in the, in the uh, studio? And, like, oh, absolutely. Really, we don't really fake happens. anything. Yes. And, okay. That was just, <laughs> but I'd also sure like to point out what that woman is saying. When you listen to the show over the course of time, you understand what it's all about. It's very but as different I said, when you con listen. Out of context, you can misunderstand anything. It's very different when you listen when you don't. Yes, ma'am. I understand that you said it's a job and it's, it's No, it's, I did not say that was a job. Well, Somebody in the audience said, said that. It. They understand that you know it's your job. I know what I'm doing. I'm very proud of okay, the job. Okay, all I of do. that, all of that. But don't you feel a responsibility to people who are in the, you know, since you're a public eye, don't you feel responsibility to... I carry myself in a way that I'm very proud of, and that's the example, okay? You don't read anything about Robin Quivers doing anything untoward. I am there as a positive example. When you sit and say to me that all black people talk like this, I'm sitting right there not doing it. That's the example. I am there. I am the example. I asked you for an example. I said... I didn't that ask you because... for an example. What I wanted to know was, don't mm -hmm. you feel a certain responsibility for the people who don't understand that it's an entertainment show? Don't you feel a responsibility to carry it a little better than what you're doing? All they have to do is either listen or don't, okay? But don't comment on things you don't know if you don't listen. Let me turn the mirror... <laughs> Let me turn the mirror a bit. Meet Daisy. Daisy, you are right? I'm fine. <laughs> Daisy was born Puerto Rican. She feels this was a curse. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, first of all, all you Puerto Ricans out there, you have, have your opinion and I have mine. You can be proud of your Puerto Rican race and I give you that right. But you know what? Don't take it from me. You know why? Because all I see in the Puerto Rican communities, and I'm not some penny any white girl anywhere, if you may think that, okay? I grew up in East New York, okay? I'm not talking from some TV show. I'm not talking from someone telling me. I'm telling you from experience. Not that I'm saying I want to be white because I'll go out and get a job because I'm going to get it based on who I am. But what is wrong? Okay? Wait. Who I, what is... I am myself. Daisy, what's wrong with being Puerto Rican? First of all, Puerto Rican men, if you're out there, they beat their women. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. Deny it, deny it, deny it. Get out of here, get out of here. You know what, you know what? You can deny it, deny it. Get out of here, yeah. Wait a minute. 
Men beat their wives, what else? Men beat their wives. Women, as I say, the men do abuse them. They get pregnant, they head for the welfare line, they claim, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. They claim that they don't know where the fathers are when they do, and then here comes next year, next year rolls around, here comes another baby, where's the father? Puerto Rican race, but look in the prisons. What do you see in there? Blacks and Puerto Ricans majority. I'm not talking about, you know, there's good and bad in everything. I'm just talking about myself. Oh. Okay? okay? That's number two. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, what's the problem? The problem is, she's talking about all. All races have problems like that. Black, white, whatever. Everybody has problems. Then I just she say cannot that. say on no. one person, didn't I just on say one that? race, on one didn't race. I, didn't you're I just say that? Black, you're saying Puerto Rican women have babies. They're on the welfare line. That goes for black, white, any. That's the, true. In the, in That's the prison, true. But what is the majority? So what what the is the majority? Just because, excuse me, First excuse of all. me. She's absolutely right. Those problems, yeah. you can't name a problem that belongs to any particular group. Mm -hmm. You may have encountered in your life right. those kind of people, those kind of examples, but you should not label your whole race and you shouldn't label yourself because you are Puerto Rican. You can never deny where you come from. That's true. That's true. You know why? Because it's on my birth certificate, but if I had the chance, I'd change it. Only, only. I am not. I, I am myself. Rodney I don't need a race. I am me and who I make of myself. Daisy, you have to address Daisy. Sally and who Daisy. Sally's talking to. Daisy, let me finish my whole statement before you comment. Okay, if you took the t as much energy into researching your history and finding your orgullo, your pride for being Boricua, you would be a lot more better than life. Okay? Uh, what you're doing, wait, wait, let me finish. What you're doing is negating your whole existence because you are Puerto Rican and should be proud of that, okay? Because you don't know nothing about being Puerto Rican. I would love to take the time to teach you about your culture, your history, and what makes you, you. And this you know culture what? today, no, okay? You know I am, my major is Spanish, my major is Spanish, and my, my Puerto Rican and black studies at Hunter College, and I know what I'm talking about. And if you would like to take the time to speak to me about what you are all about, I would love to do that, and okay? You know what? Because you, you are negating your whole existence. You are Puerto Rican, okay? And you walk down the street and people see you as Puerto Rican, so you live your life as a Puerto Rican and don't be ashamed of it, please. No, no, wait a don't minute. You know what? I applaud you. Because you're dissing me and I give and it I to you if you look, basically, if you go into basically, okay, so research wait, 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 wait. But don't take don't it easy. Me. But that's not my, my she choice. Not her choice. But the point is, Daisy, if you're not living that way, you uh, are the living I example that Puerto Ricans don't have to be that all right. way. And all Puerto Ricans are not that way. You Hello. have to be proud of who you are as a human you know, being. But, and you are also, that's part of who you are. You are Puerto Rican. And you should stand up and say that proudly. You're not responsible for every other Puerto Rican and how they act in the world. Comments. That is not your job. But you know what? I don't. Yes, they will. The They'll get through. Is because Just I Just stand don't. here with me. You're, you have to be like I am, really. Okay. Relatively calm. Let's go. I have several comments directed at your guest. First of all, I'm from Canada and I'm not familiar with your show. There you go. Okay. However, I would welcome the opportunity to have your radio show. Several years ago, there was an attack on women at University of Montreal, which is my university. I remember Four that. Women were shot. The following morning, all the radio shows, the rock stations, were very serious. 
It was called tact. Had they were making jokes of it, I would just do what I think a lot of the audience members should do who are hostile. Shut it off. That's right. That's what you should do. If something is bothering you, no good shut point. it off. Very good point. We'll be right back. All right. As if this hasn't been difficult enough, we want you to meet uh, Kathy and May. Kathy and May say that there is nothing worse than having to live in this world in white skin. They say they would do anything to change it. Kathy, let's start with you. You told our producers if you could take a magic pill to be black, you would do that. True. Why? Because I do know I've been I live in the ghetto, so I wouldn't stand there like a sore thumb. No, because you, you're throwing questions, and I ain't even started talking yet. You don't know what like. Okay, go like ahead. Anyway, <laughs> I, would t I would take it for the fact I wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb. And let, before we get started, let's not get it messed up. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of who I am, because I'm proud of myself. I'm ashamed of all the white people out there. All right, okay. for the fact, I'm about, I'm about to explain it short and simple. All right, wait, hold up. Time for a minute, all right? For the reason, they sit up in the offices down and you put a white man and a black man in suit. Who gonna get that job? That white man because that's all they looking out for. Uh, a black man. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, You have to listen to Kathy speak. Kathy, you do your best to look black. Is that correct? If you what can, you do can. you do to look more black? I, if you can't see, if you can't tell by looking at me, I don't need. If you don't can't tell, all right. This is me. Y'all can. This is me. I don't care. Y'all can. This is me. This is okay. My the same as she does. Yeah, I do. I think white people have a lot of resentment toward blacks. I think they, they really, they still, don't, they still don't understand them. They don't live with them, okay? I live in a neighborhood where there are the situation is. These black people, okay, Afro-Americans, they are human, okay? We are all human. If I cut my wrist, you cut yours, I am telling you, the blood is going to be red. There is not going to be a difference in the blood. And the fact of the matter is, is that these people deserve their chance. But why and they're hospitable you, people. But why do you need to be black in order to feel better about yourself. If we're all human beings, why can't you be who you are who and am. feel good about it? I am. This is me. I've been like this for years. This ain't no act. This ain't no overnight thing. It's not this about me. an act. You just said if you could take a pill. Let me take a break. break. We'll be right back. I have to answer that question. Meet Sean. Sean, you've been sitting there kind of quiet. <laughs> Sean would probably tell you that you are crazy to want to be black because Sean is black and he's embarrassed by his race. He says it has gotten so bad that he would like to exclude himself from being black. Sean, why? Just tell us um, why. I, first of all, I'm very proud to be black. I like to be black. I have a very strong mother and grandmother who raised me, and they were very strong black influences on me. What I mean by I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed by other black people by the way that they present themselves socially. You have to admit that they present themselves very poorly in social settings. That is a fact. That is a fact. I, 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 have, worked in re I have worked in retail for over four years. And the way that the black teenagers, the black older people come into the mall and act is to me, that's, it, it, it's, it's really disgusting. 
that the way they act and they that they treat other people. They are very loud. But aren't there white teenagers? Obnoxious. Yes, but 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 this is the thing. You don't see them. You see the blacks over anybody else. They are the ones that want to be heard over everyone else. They are loud and belligerent. That's what, that's in my experience. I'm not saying this is for everybody. This is in my experience. And you have to be honest with yourself. If you're not being honest with yourself, then that, then, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm being Robin, realistic about it. Robin, what would you say to Sean? That's well, what I said. I said it's in my experience. This excuse is, I'm not me. talking here for everyone. Is his name Sean? Yes. Sean, why do you become personally embarrassed if people who, act, who are out there in the mall are acting in a way that you would not act? Because they might think that I'm the same way. They might say, well, he's black. Oh, well, let me go to this white sales person. Excuse me, but Sean, you can't run your life that way. I'm, you have to represent Sean when you're and that, in your you workplace and wherever you go. So there are, there are people of all persuasions who act up and get out of control yeah. and do the wrong things, okay? We cannot sit around saying it's embarrassing to be me because somebody over there I'm did something I'm not saying it's embarrassing to be me. Wrong. And, I didn't and say I'm that. afraid I didn't say people that. will think that's that. me. That is that person's problem. Okay, if they okay, want well, to characterize all black people by one that they met, that is their problem. But you know what? It happens. That's the reality of it all. That And happens. you have the opportunity to make them think differently because you represent Present yourself well. And I do, and I do that for myself. Okay, please listen. Um, Sally, I really don't understand this because my family, we call them the melting pot. We have blacks, we have Spanish, we have Italian, we have Jewish, we have everything. And everybody in our family gets along. Everybody. Two of my sisters are married to Puerto Rican men. One of my brother has an Italian wife. My family is mixed. We have a little bit of everything. This is a, in case you're in case you're asking yourself, this is a show about pride and belief in oneself. Everyone That's what should have pride in themselves. Okay. We'll be right back. Um, I, I just want to congratulate you on your book. And Thank I think you. in spite of all the controversy, I think you're a beautiful person. Well, you know what? Let me just say one thing. I yeah. learned about dealing with controversy from one of my role models. When Muhammad Ali came along and he was doing all the things that we were told we weren't supposed to do, nobody applauded him either. None of these black people were applauding him, but he kept doing it because he believed in himself. And I believe in myself. In fact, I just gave a speech not too long ago at the Parkinson Foundation dinner to honor Muhammad Ali and I have always been proud of who I am and it comes from a deep-seated pride I don't have to yell at people to prove it I don't have to dress in a certain way to prove it I don't have to talk with my hands to prove it all I have to do is stay in this skin and be proud of who I am yes Sean um, this is what I would like to ask the audience for those of you who object to what we are saying let me ask you this what are you doing in your community to give back if you are not part of the solution do not be part of the problem that is what I'm saying what, what, what do you personally do do you go out into your community do you go out to the YMCA the boys club and so on shh, shh. one at a time yes ma'am Daisy I still don't understand why you are you're not proud of being a Puerto Rican. You just generalize. You haven't been specific about one thing. And basically, all of you just up here, you just want to be on TV. That's what it no, sounds no, like. No, because no, you no, say no, you're from the ghetto. Like you no, say you're from like the that. ghetto. No, what is a ghetto? No, what is a ghetto? No, no, no. It's not like that. Let me, let me explain to you, OK? You have your opinion. I Wait a minute. You let me finish. Let me say finish. It, it, I it. have mine, OK? You should what? not. Tell me how I should feel but about myself. But you haven't told me what it is. You why? 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 I'll tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. I'll tell you why. Tell you, why. Tell you, tell you, why. you know why? Because when I go out there in the streets and I see the Puerto Ricans and every, I see the white people looking down at them. I've lived on both sides. I've lived on both sides. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've been on both sides of the coin. And you know what? This woman here that talked about the melting pot. Let me tell Daisy. you something about prejudice. I'm far from prejudice because my family, oh, excuse me, my family is a melting pot. My son and daughter, my daughter's Puerto Rican, my son is Chinese, my boyfriend is a, a Russian Jew, and that's right, and my mother was Puerto Rican. 
All right? Yes, you not, know what? My yes, mother sir. did not teach Daisy, me. Daisy, oh, I haven't seen right, any pride. Sally, this is the pressure from institutionalized racism. For every strong-minded person that walks the face of this earth, you have thousands of people who walk around hypnotized. They don't have a clue, and the program and they, the program they pick up, whether it's negative or positive, they drink it up like water into a sponge. And because there's more of them, then there are more of the strong-minded people that are able to say the things that everybody knows are true, that everybody's human, and we all bleed the same and all that stuff, it gets lost in the wash. I hope sincerely that your show will be the first show that whenever there's a, a topic that has anything to do with anything involving racism, they make the distinction between race and ethnicity. Yes, ma'am, go. Now listen. We'll be right back. Thank Robin Quivers for being our guest and to tell you that she's written an excellent book called Quivers, A Life. That's right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being with us. See you next time. <laughs>